You're welcome to First Take with me, Jifa Bampo. Today, we are speaking to the government statistician, Professor Samuel Enim. In some 24 hours, we will start the countdown to this year's census, a once-in-a-decade activity. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Enim. Thank you very much for joining us on First Thank Take. Thank you, Jifa. All right. So this is um, a once-in-a-decade activity, the National Population and Housing Census. I understand this year's is a unique activity. Can you explain why? Thank you, Jifa. Indeed, in several respects, the 2021 Population and Housing Census is unique in several respects. And one of the dominant features that makes it distinct from other previous censuses is the use of technology and the extent to which we are injecting um, technology in the 2021 population housing census. Let me give some specifics in terms of the technology that we are putting in place for the 2021 PAC. Anytime we talk about technology-driven sensors, people avert their minds to the use of tablets. But I'm always quick to say that although this is the first time we are using tablets in data collection for the sensors, it's not the first of its kind for Ghana Studies Car Service. We just did the Ghana Census of Agric, which we used the, which we used tablets, and also in our last um, Living Standard Survey, we used um, tablets. But what makes it technology-driven is improving on the resources around the use of tablets for the data collection. So one of the things that we've done to improve the use of tablets is the superimposition of geospatial resources to ensure that we have benchmark data and to improve the data collection process. So Just to interrupt you, when you talk about geospatial resources, that is then using technology to have an overview of the land and, and mass. Excellent. So ahead of the sensors, we have a lot of satellite imagery, which is giving us information on where structures are located in the country. So based on our international collaboration, We've had access to building footprints in all the 51,916 enumeration areas. This data set has been underlaid over, over the um, demarcation exercise that we did. And while we go through the enumeration areas, the enumerators are aware of where some of these um, structures are, like, are located to ensure that every structure is visited. Another way by which we think the 2021 Population Housing Census is using technology to make it a distinct exercise is the institutionalization of a data monitoring mechanism. So for the first time, we have a, data, a, a dashboard that has been developed. So for instance, as government statistician, I can view all that is happening in all the 51,916 enumeration areas. While is it I in sit real here. time? In real time. So once data is, is collected, we are able to benchmark the expected data that has to be collected in each district with what is actually being collected. And so you I, can actually keep track of how fast or how slow the process is going. Indeed, that is the essence. It is called an enumeration tracking dashboard. And you've, you've said it right. What it helps us to do is areas that we are falling short, areas that we are likely to finish ahead of time, and we've put in a workload management system which would allow us to improve on the, on the work that the enumerators are doing and also where we need to push in more enumerators to add on to a particular enumerator's work to ensure that all this work is done within the 28th and the 11th July that has been scheduled um, for this exercise. In terms of the uniqueness beyond technology, I want to touch on two other things, if you don't mind. One has to do with the decentralization of the work. In previous censuses, although we had decentralized the activities, it occasioned at the time of the data collection. But for the 2021 PAC, we did recruit district census officers ahead, four or five months ahead of the exercise. Indeed, prior to COVID-19, we had recruited them already. They started working, but for COVID-19, we disengaged their services. And once we were certain that we we're going to do it, now it's not just the DCOs that we've recruited. In addition to the district census officers, we have district IT persons, we have district field um, supervisors, and as I indicated, we have district data quality monitors. So we have a four-member team at the district level working with the district coordinating directors and seven other district census implementation committees to ensure that the census is really decentralized in terms of its implementation. And on the technology bit, I do know that there are many parts of our country that still have network challenges and connectivity issues. How have you resolved that then if you're going to use uh, technology through the tablets and, and other, um, you know, 
uh, technology to do this work? What we've done, and you are right to say that internet challenges are bound to occur because we are going to expect the enumerators to sync data in real time when they collect them from the respondents. In view of that, we've done two things. One, we've engaged with NCA. They've given us information on the network connectivity for the different um, telecos across the country. So we know where 4G works, we know where 3G works by different types of um, networks, and also where we don't have internet connectivity at all for all the three major networks that we have. In view of that, we are not expecting syncing of data via internet as the only option for getting data to head office. We have Bluetooth mechanism where the enumerators without internet, with Bluetooth, if they get into contact with their supervisors, the supervisors can then sync the data to HQ. And in areas where it would even be difficult for supervisors to sync data to um, the headquarters after receiving it from the um, enumerators, we are having district IT offices. As I, as I indicated, for the purposes of the census, we have 272 statistical districts. But because of internet challenges that we have across the country, we are recruiting 476 district IT officers so that they can work closely with the enumerators and supervisors. They would pick the data, move to a place where there is connectivity, and then the data gets to head office. So these are the two um, interventions that we are instituting to ensure that data moves from the enumerators to HQ in real time, either through Bluetooth by the supervisors or through the district IT offices. All right. In as much as um, this process is ongoing, there's always a talk of census night. You say it's on 27 June. Why is census night so important? Why is it a reference point? It is a refer reference point because we want to have a uniform responses, a harmonized responses across the days that we're going to do the data collection. The data collection is starting on 28th to the 11th of 28th of June to the 11th of July. You'll be interviewing some people on the 28th and others will be interviewing them on the 11th of July. You wouldn't want a situation where people would be making reference to questions using different dates. Once you do that, you are, you are not able to harmonize the responses so data analysis will not be accurate. So the reason why we do the census night is to remind everybody in Ghana that the questions that we are going to ask would, would be using 27th as a reference night. Let me give you a couple of examples. The whole counting of persons in Ghana is based on those who spend the census night in Ghana. So we call it a snapshot of the population. So although we say it's the midnight of 27th um, June 2021, operationally it's actually six hours before the midnight and six hours after the midnight. So it goes from 6 p.m. 27th of June to midnight, 27th of June, and then from midnight, 27th of June, to 6 a.m. of 28th of June. So that within that space, wherever you are, we can ask questions related to that. Indeed, on that night, there are some categories of people that we're going to, int we're going to enumerate, such as our floating population, our population that um, are on transit that day. You are moving from one point to another. We cannot exactly pinpoint where you are at the midnight. So we either interview you at your point of departure, or at a point of, of arrival. There are some questions in there like economic activity and mortality, which are specific to number of days. So for instance, if you want to get a sense of employment, unemployment in Ghana, we make reference to the economic activity that you've engaged in seven days prior to the census night. Again, somebody might have engaged in some activity over that seven day, over that specified seven days, but in the course of the year was engaged in some other activity. So for you to harmonize the responses, we want to get all activities that persons in Ghana engaged in seven days prior to the 27th. So that is why we always want to have a reference point for purposes of harmonizing responses across the enumeration days that we have. All right. Certainly, COVID protocols will be observed. Indeed. We have procured all the PPEs, the personal protective equipment. We have procured the um, face masks. We've pro procured the sanitizers. We have all the tissues, the liquid soaps, the Veronica buckets. And we've reached an advanced stage in getting the Ghana Health Service to, pro to give us vaccines to ensure that 
while we train the 76,500 um, field officers, they are vaccinated over the period. Indeed, some of them have already taken the job, the vaccination, and currently we are at the phase of collecting the information from the field officers in terms of those who have already been vaccinated, will pass this, over, this information over to the Ghana Health Service, and then those who are yet to be vaccinated will do the needful to ensure that they are. So we are adhering to all the COVID-19 protocols. Indeed, one of our cost overruns is as a result of ensuring that we don't keep more than 40 people in a classroom. Hither to COVID-19, we're going to put about 60 people in a classroom, but for COVID and adhering to the recommendations, we are keeping 40 people in a classroom, which will require that you need more spaces, you need more facilitators when we are training our field officers.